Hi and welcome to Rep Vlog. This is a weekly vlog where I'm going to be answering questions that people have been asking specifically about Retribution Paladins. In between doing the live Q&As, which I do roughly once a tierish or half a tier. And speaking of which, I'm planning on the next live Retribution Q&A falling between BlizzCon and Antorus opening. Uh, I think that should give it a fairly narrow window there. But that's what I'm planning on. So like the weekend after BlizzCon is what I'm thinking at the moment. But make sure you follow me on Twitter. I'll give more details near the time. So there's one main question here which I'm going to sort of try and tackle. And there's a few other questions which I'm going to get to at the end where I think I can answer it quite quickly. Uh, the first one is about Divine Shield. So the title of this vlog, How Useful is Divine Shield? Now, here's the question. Uh, doesn't Divine Shield bring always something good to the table if the fight has a soaking mechanic? While pugging with some guilders, we were looking for people able to soak a big Armageddon on KJ. That's just one example that comes to mind. Never played on Mythic. Don't know if that changes things. It does change things on Mythic, but I'll come to that. Armageddon is, ironically, one of the really good things for us. But, uh, I mean, let's give it a little history lesson. So Divine Shield used to be absolutely fantastic, in even though it sort of still does what it did then. Um, because we were basically only peoples with something like that. Frost Mages, specifically Frost Mages, always had Ice Block. But then you're not mobile when you're in it. But immunities weren't really a thing other than for Paladins. Paladins had Divine Shield, um, which was really useful for those. Sort of, but it wasn't really used for soaking mechanics as such because, you know, you didn't really have those sort of mechanics like, oh, we want loads of people in this, or do you know what? You could get into it. Because if there was a Meteor-type effect, a soak effect, it wasn't actually a big hassle to get everyone in it anyway. And... Um, but over time, what has happened is you've got, there's two issues with it. First of all, Divine Shield relative to some other classes, immunities, has become weaker. And you say, well, how can immunity become weaker? It actually has, and I could give some examples from Tumor Sargeras as well. And the, the other thing is, as I say, more classes have got these same ones. So there's a lot of fights in Legion, not just Tumor Sargeras, and, and over the past few years, where you have a situation where it's like we need one person to soak this because it's a right hassle getting everyone to do it. You know, there's the tentacle slams on Hellia, for example, and you've got the various soaking things in Tomb of Sargeras. You've got, uh, I mean, you mentioned there the Armageddon, the Kill Jaden one. Obviously, that's one where you need like one person to go into it. The issue is whenever you have a soak, there are multiple people who can do it. Yes, a paladin can do it, okay? So can a demon hunter, so can a mage, so can a rogue, so can a hunter. In addition, depending on the nature of the soak mechanic, possibly a feral, a death knight, a monk, a priest, a warlock. Really, there's only shamans and warriors that you can't actually expect to solo these soak mechanics. And largely the reason for this is, one, the vast majority of soak mechanics, the vast majority of what, what I would call, because this is the real crux of this, potentially fatal effects are spell damage. Now, let's compare Divine Shield with Cloak of Shadows because that's the extreme example. But nonetheless, a class does have Cloak of Shadows. And it's not like it's their only defensive either. We know rogues have got lots of defensives. So compared to Cloak of Shadows, it sort of does the same thing. It makes you immune. But Bubble makes you immune to physical effects as well. Now, we have to play fair here. In Tomb of Sargeras, there are more potentially fatal physical effects that I can remember. Uh, I, you know, I, if I went through every single t raid tier, maybe I would think of another one that had the same number or more. But I can't think of anything off the top of my head. So what have we got? We've got a Mistress Sassine. You've got the Hydra Shot. So, but I mean, that one where you do expect people to get into there and soak it. But let's say you can't. Let's say there's, there's, the boss is nearly dead at the end. There's very few people. You can't realistically get them all soaked anyway. You as the Paladin volunteer, don't worry. Don't soak mine. I'll just deal with mine. Use your bubble. You'll be fine. Jobs are good. Un, okay? That's fantastic. Can rogues do that? Not really. They can use cheat death. Uh, they could cheat death it potentially if that hadn't been used in the fight already. But they can't actually soak it is what we're talking about. So that's one where it's one up on the old bubble there. You've mentioned uh, Kill Jaden. It's quite useful for that. So the big Armageddon, the little ones, you know, fire effects, but you, you survive those anyway. The big ones, the Armageddons, that is physical damage. So a rogue, ironically, could only say uh, solo it if we put a bop on them. Because you can put bops on people as well. But again, that's something we get. 
Um, and again, that's something that all paladins bring. Now, I'm going to come on to another question later to address that. But those are two examples of soak mechanics where the Divine Shield is superior to, say, Cloak of Shadows because it's physical effects. But that's two there, and I can't really think of any tier where I could say there were two effects uh, that you could use it on. So in terms of other mechanics, so let's go through the, the list here. So you've got Goroth with uh, Brimstone. Now, okay, it's not a, well, it's a fatal one if you solo soak it. So let's say, you, again, it's one where lots of people are supposed to soak it. This is only on Mythic mode, by the way. But you get to the end of the fight, there's a lot of people dead. Maybe you can't quite cover them all, so someone goes and solo soaks it. Paladin could do that with Bubble. But a rogue could do it with Cloak of Shadows as well. So they're their equivalent. And then you say to yourself, okay, well... In certain situations, it's okay, we'll agree it's equivalent to Cloak of Shadows, but in other situations, the Divine Shield's superior. So why are you saying that it's not as good as Cloak of Shadows? Uh, and I'm not. I would absolute. I would prefer to have Cloak of Shadows. If I had a choice, Blizzard gave me a choice, Cloak of Shadows or Divine Shield, I'll take Cloak of Shadows, thank you very much. And why is that? Because in theory, it's not as good. It doesn't last quite as long, and it only does magical damage. The reason is because it has a much shorter cooldown. So I can use it more frequently. And when you have fights that have these soak mechanics, you don't just have one. It's not just once in the fight this happens. It happens quite a lot of times. Sometimes like, you know, every, every minute or so. So to have this thing available so that you could do at least every second one, potentially every one, depending on, you know, if it was every one and a half minutes, you could almost do every one. Um, or every two minutes, certainly you could do every one. That sort of makes it way better and the fact that all right you can't use it on physical damage it's hardly any potentially fatal physical mechanics and not just in this tier in any tier in any tier at all demonic inquisition there aren't any what i would call potentially fatal uh, mechanics in there at all that doesn't mean to say you can't die but when you die on demonic inquisition it's a it's a series of things that kills you it's not one thing when i'm talking about fatal mechanics i mean you can be on full health this thing hits you, you're dead. Uh, that's what I mean there. So it doesn't really have any on Demonic Inquisition. Harjatan, you know, you could argue the uh, frost damage if you get loads of stacks from standing in puddles. But again, Cloak of Shadows works just as well as Bubble on that one. Um, Mistress of Sin we've already discussed. Now, there are some things for which Cloak of Shadows uh, is just as good as, say... Um, uh, Divine Shield, but you know, I'm going to give Divine Shield the nod there because the biggest danger is the Hydra shot on Mythic. As I say, if it's last phase and or people out of position or for some other reason there's not enough people to soak your beam, you can just go, Do you know what? Soak the other people's beams, I'll deal with this. A rogue doesn't have that option unless they've got a cheat death handy, but that's not soaking it. Uh, so I'll give us the nod um, from the old utility on Mistress Azine there. Desolate Host. Desolate Host is the real killer for me. It's the absolute and really annoying one. Because I know I'm doing this out of order, by the way. But get straight to Desolate Host here. The Spear. Spear of Anguish, I think it's called, isn't it? Uh, on Mythic mode. So what this does, it uh, chucks a spear at you. Which normally would kill you. So you need to split the damage with someone. So you go over someone's designated to split the damage with you. It'll still do quite a lot of damage on this between one person. But, of course, if Divine Shield, you can immune the damage on it. Great. Okay. Uh, but you'll still get punted into the other realm. Which basically means when you get this spear on you, you've got to go all the way around or to the back. to get, Basically get out of the way of people on your side. Because even with Bubble on, as soon as the spear hits you, you're in the other realm. So you don't want to be killing people with dissonance or yourself. You get yourself around. You need to take... You need to get below 50% health before you can use a brazier to get back. So you're basically going around there and you're going to join the other side for a bit until wailing cells come in and then you've got to muck about there. So you're going to lose quite a lot of uptime on, on, on bosses there. Uh, even though, you know, you could say you're going to be just as useful on, on Soul Queen as Engine, you know, shared health. There's the movement to get there. You're losing DPS then. Rogues can use their cloak on it and they don't get knocked through. So the rogue's cloak is actually better for that mechanic the Divine Shield, because it immunes it and it stops them being punted. So all a rogue has to do is go, oh, I've got a spear on me. Oh, that's interesting. Carry on DPSing. When it's about to hit, back away a little bit. Cloak. Done. Back to the boss. Simple. And unless they get spammed with it, if they get two consecutive ones, okay, they've got to deal with it same as anyone else. But, you know, if they get the one after or something, 
They've got their cloak available again. They could get a couple in a fight, realistically. And as long as it's not one after the other, deal with it. Paladin, no chance. If they have to use their bubble on one, that it's not available for the rest of the fight. You're not realistically going to have the fight last long enough to get another spear and be able to use your bubble on it again. So that's a situation where it's just you know, not as good. Um, when it comes to sisters, we'll go back to sisters there, uh, which of course we have to do before Desolate Host. Then, you know, what's the what's the fatal mechanic on that one? You're looking at the uh, storm, aren't you? The glaive storm. That's arcane damage, so cloak is going to work just as well as bubble. Plus, again, as I said, because of the timing on it, you can, I'm not saying you can use cloak on every single one. I'm not sure about the timings on that one. But you could use cloak on more of them than you can use bubble. Uh, similarly for getting rid of things as well, it's useful. Uh, what are we going to go up to then? Maiden, Maiden, you're screwed either way. If someone is going to blow up the raid, they're going to blow up the raid. It really makes no difference whether you survive or not. Um, the fight is over on, on Mythic Maiden. Fallen Avatar, of course, do we even need to mention it? The rogues are... The first skills that killed that boss had to take lots of rogues. They had to take lots of rogues. For the soaking the touch of Sargeras, if nothing else. Uh, they're also able to deal with other things. Because, I mean, the irony is, they don't even need Cloak of Shadows to deal with the soaking. So they can soak every single touch of Sargeras. Not with Cloak. It's too frequent to do it with Cloak. But they have other things as well that, that are so powerful that they can solo soak a, uh, a touch of Sargeras. Paladin can only soak it with uh, Bubble active. And you're only going to get one of you to use one of those. Um, maybe if you used it on the very first one and the first phase lasted long enough, you could get to use it again. But you still need you'd need a rotation on a particular set, whereas rogues can just do it solo. But that's to do with rogues. I'm, I'm talking specifically about cloak of shadows. But again, cloak of shadows could be used on every second one, let's say, as opposed to every. Well, if you take divine intervention, you could do it on the first one, and you as long as you popped it a few seconds before the touch was going to hit. You could use it on one four minutes later as well, on the fifth one. Um, and then, you know, it comes to kill Jaden. Most of it, again, Cloak of Shadows is just as good as Divine Shield, only again because you can use it more frequently. It's more useful there. It cannot help you on the large Armageddons. But again, like I said, large Armageddons, even on Mythic, you've got three of them. Uh, generally speaking, tanks can solo those, and you tend to take three tanks on Mythic Kill Jane, well, largely for that specific reason. Um, you still use DPS to do it, and you've got, as I say, multiple classes who can do it. Demon Hunters can do them, Mages can do them, uh, Hunters can do them, Paladins can do them. Um, so you've got multiple people who can do those as well. So that's sort of where we are in terms of the Divine Shield. Its its main drawback, as I say, is this massive cooldown on it. You use it once, and it's a very long time before you can use it again. And it's not like you have... The, the other thing is sometimes, obviously, if you had to use it on a mechanic, then you would use it on the mechanic if you were required to do that. But you're hesitant to do it because you don't have anything else in the bag, really. Uh, shield Adventures is our only other defensive, uh, unless it's physical, in which case we take eye for an eye. And... You know, that, in my case, will absorb less than 900,000 damage. Which is a decent chunk, but it's not quite even a fifth of my health. Whereas a good old-fashioned damage absorb, like, uh, uh, sorry, uh, reduction, even a 30% damage reduction, with a big hit, can basically negate more than that in terms of damage. Um, and again, that has a long cooldown. You know, one and a half minutes-ish, depending on, on traits. So that's the issue with Divine Shield, as I say. It's, it's mostly that it, it takes much longer before you get it back compared to the other classes whose works just as well. Like, in theory, um, you know, Ice Block isn't as good because you can't DPS in it. Uh, in theory, Cloak of Shadows isn't as good because it won't do physical damage. In theory, you know, Aspects of the Turtle won't be as good because again, you can't damage when you're in it. But in practice, you can all do more of them. And that's what matters. It doesn't matter whether you're able to do damage when you're in this thing. It doesn't matter that it won't do physical damage when there's hardly any physical damage like to kill you in, in any given fight, let alone tier. Um, and it's just down to that. But anyway, uh, on to some other questions. So really quick ones I can answer here. Uh, one little question says, why do paladins not have a battle res? Ironically, we used to. Not as a spell. Uh, one of my jobs on, on some fights in Molten Core was to battle res because... 
they they soon sorted this out. But mind you, it must have taken them some time because I was on European realms. It took me a long time before I got into raiding. So in actual fact, this was still working a good year after it had been brought out in North America. But if you didn't get involved in a fight, it was possible for you to stay out of combat. So you could actually res someone. And as long as, again, you didn't cast heals on them, other than that you could cast the res on them. If you didn't cast heals on them, you didn't do attacks or anything like that, and you stayed well out of the way of any enemy mobs, you could stay out of combat and battle res. But in terms of having a battle res, I don't think it would make much sense. And I certainly don't think it's a reason to bring us because I, you know, and I've been an officer in this guild. I've been an officer in lots of guilds as well. Uh, well, a few guilds. And um, I can't remember ever having a discussion about taking someone between like, oh, this last slot, what we're going to take, this person or this person, we'll take this person because they've got a battle res. I don't remember doing that. It's much less likely to be the case now as well because you're limited with battle res, you, battle res you can use. I mean, I don't remember even having that discussion back when you could just use whatever battle res you had. But now that it doesn't matter, you can have 10 people in your raid that have got battle res ready. If you've already used one and you haven't gone a, you know, a couple of minutes down the line to get your next one, uh, you're still not going to be able to use it. So I don't see that as something um, that would bring us, and it, just like any other thing like that, like time warp or heroism or anything like that. Again, you've got someone in the raid who can do it. If you've got, if you've got enough people in the raid who can do it, you, you know, being an extra one isn't really all that helpful. So I don't see that one. Uh, next one, uh, this was to do with last week's, about the ink puddles on Mistress having the slow effect because I, I assumed that you'd have to watch the last week's one. Sorry, I'm not going to explain it again. Um, that it was the green puddle on Mistress that the person in question was talking about. And people are pointing out it's much more likely to be the purple puddles. I'm just going to have to go with that one. I'll retract it. But at the end of the day, I, it baffles me still. Baffles me. I mean, since that vlog, and people have been saying this, I've actually done Hero twice. I did it last Sunday. I've done it again today. I did it on the stream. Uh, and I was soaking inky puddles. And I was thinking, you know, I had no problem moving from anything. I did get knocked back by a crashing wave, I have to say. But that was because the, the tanks weren't moving the boss. I didn't know which side they were going to do it. And damned if I was going to be taking DPS off. And I also knew it wasn't going to kill me. Um, if it were going to kill me, I would have moved out, definitely. But, uh, but it, you know, but that's because I was still, still in it. I, I, I didn't struggle to move around with it. It doesn't slow you down enough. There's nothing really nasty going on at this time, even in phase three where there's tornadoes again. Because at the end of the day, on heroic especially, where are you when the, the tornadoes are coming in? You're be, be, you've got the green puddle. You've just killed Abyss Stalkers. You're melee. You've killed them in melee. That's where you are. You don't have to move. The tornadoes will come. They'll disappear when they go over the green stuff. Unlike in Mythic where they don't disappear. Uh, but I'll retract it if that's what people are saying. And there's quite a lot of people who are saying that's an issue. So I'll just, you know, put my hands up and go, okay, fine. I'll give you that one. Um, I just don't get it though. I really don't. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> next one. I don't really understand your reasoning behind not using Divine Storm on Mythic Inquisition and Hajatan. Uh, well, that's colour two of us confused there because I didn't say I didn't use Divine Storm on Hajatan. Why would I not use Divine Storm on Hajatan? I don't get that. Uh, I'm not quite sure why you think I say that. But I will give you a good reason not to use it on Inquisition. And that's simply that it doesn't do any useful damage. So for those who don't know, Mythic Inquisition, it works basically the same as Heroic Inquisition, with one important difference. If anyone has to go into the cage to get rid of their torment, when they come out, they'll spawn a little ad that goes around, rah, 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 fixates on someone. Uh, when you kill it, it spawns these big purple bubbles. You don't want that anywhere near Malie for a start. Um, <clears throat> now, you could, if you wanted, if you saw one of them go past, fire off some, or if, if they're fixated on melee and you're attacking the boss, you could fire off a load of Divine Storms. It's not actually helping kill the boss. Uh, now, it shouldn't be a big deal to kill the boss, but nonetheless, what I'm saying is that's pure padding. You don't need to kill those adds as a Retribution Paladin. There are other, the ranged would be far better at it, in fact are, like Boomkins, for example, will absolutely wreck those adds. So there's no issue. The only problem those adds can cause is if they mug people. And as I say, Boomkins will deal with them and many other classes as well, ranged classes, because most of them won't be fixated on melee, which means they'll come nowhere near you, which means if you're using Divine Storm on them, that means you're chasing them around, doing zero damage to the boss. Encounter ends when the boss dies. So <clears throat> any damage you are doing to them 
is just there to boost up your numbers on your damage meter. And it's not helped killing the encounter. And if you're in a guild that wipes on that boss, then, and you're doing that, then you're part of the cause of that. Because no one's dying to those ads. Um, and if they are, then you're not helping by Divine Storming them anyway. Because there's loads of other people in the raid that should do that better. Last one. Do you think Holy Paladin being mandatory in any raid, whilst bringing all Rhett's utility bar wisdom, is considered by Blizzard when balancing Rhett? Um, it's a very good question, actually. I've stuck this one in. I have the very strong impression that Blizzard... There's two things, I think. First of all, when it comes to deciding if any particular class needs a leg up or indeed a punch down, they think about classes. They don't think about specs. So I think they see that raids typically have paladins in them. Now, the fact that... Because there have been times as well in the recent past when protection paladins have also been very strong. Now, in a situation like that where a, a raid may well have a protection paladin and one, maybe even two holy paladins, then they're just going to look at it as, do you know what, there's three paladins in, in a typical raid. There's not an issue with paladins. They won't see the fact that it's like two holy paladins and prop paladin or something like that. Now, at the moment, you, do, you wouldn't necessarily want two holy paladins and... You know, I'm not saying prop paladins are bad, but they're not amazing at the moment. So you don't really necessarily... It's not on your wish list if you haven't got one. Um, so you could argue that paladins at the moment might, and I only say might, be underrepresented. But I think, you know, the issue... As I say, I think they see it as classes. But the other thing is, they do see retribution paladins as being overpopulated. And this is where we, there are problems because it... You know, I think it is true. Retribution Paladins across the game are very well represented. There's loads of them. They're very popular. But they are not well represented at Mythic. Now, I'm not saying we're bad at Mythic. You know, we are there. We're not rare in Mythic. But we're certainly not over, you know, overrepresented in Mythic raiding. And, um, but I don't think they really care about to break it down in terms of that. I mean, you look at heroics. I, I look at heroic logs sometimes of guilds, and it's not unusual to see two or even three Retribution Paladins. Uh, no issues at all in, in heroic uh, or normal. But uh, yeah, in Mythic, you're not going to see three rets. It's, it's pretty interesting if you even see two. And in this tier, you're very unlikely to see two. Um, so that's that's my answer to that one. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think they see it in terms of classes. And as you note there, we don't actually bring any new utility. Like Holy Paladins have unique utility, uh, for example, that we don't have access to. We don't have anything that they don't. Apart from, as I say, wisdom, but the wisdom is missable. I mean, one person in your raid, probably a healer, is going to appreciate having wisdom on them. Um, if we're ever in a situation where... The raid leader says, right, we're going to have to bench the rep for this fight because they're not bringing anything. You're not going to hear wailing of gnashing of teeth of the person who would get wisdom. They would just be a little bit disappointed, but they're not going to make a fuss. So it's not that bit. Whereas if someone was leaving that had major utility, it'd be like, no, we need them for that, don't we? So, you know, people overstate uh, the effects of wisdom. So anyway, uh, those are some questions there. Again, if you want me to sort of uh, tackle any particular questions next week, put them in the comments below. I'll try and tackle them. Uh, if there's a really in-depth one, I'll try and tackle that. And as I say, the week after BlizzCon, it's not set in stone yet, but that's when I'm thinking of doing the next live rec Q&A where we'll go through all the stuff that's been talked about at BlizzCon as well as how we're likely to be in Antorus. Uh, in, the next, in the coming week, I am myself going to be sitting down and writing my updated guide for Antorus, uh, which, by the way, I'm not going to get caught out. Last time when I did this, uh, I produced it, put it out there, and then Blizzard changed around the set bonuses. They swapped the two and the four set. I'm going to assume they're going to do that this time. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, they are definitely going to move the two and the four set around, so I'm going to put that in my video because um, I will bet my left knacker that that's what they're going to do. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Put your comments down below, especially if you've got questions you want me to cover next week. And until next time, I'll see you later.